Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. From July 4th through August 26th, if you use this promo code, you will automatically be entered into a drawing to win a set of all four Commander 2019 decks. Also, there is another way to enter where no purchase is necessary. See the description below for full details. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and it's that time of the week again where we recap the results from the large tournaments from the weekend. We have a lot to go over today. Grand Prix Denver occurred. That was a standard event. Star City Games Philadelphia. They held an open, which was a trios open, which meant teams of three played standard, modern, and legacy. Plus, they had a standard classic, a modern classic, and a legacy classic. We're going to look at the top eights for all those events. We're going to look at a lot of deck lists, too and talk about specifically how cards from both Core Set 2020 and Modern Horizons have impacted these formats. Quickly though, before we get into it, fast reminder, if you're still looking to pre-order Commander 2019 decks, all four of them are together as a set on FlipSideGaming.com. If you use the Heroes promo code, you can get them for $126 and free shipping. And of course, whenever you use that promo code, it supports the channel, which is always appreciated. So thank you, and let's get into it. Here's your top eight for the Grand Prix that occurred at Magic Fest Denver. And like I said, this is a standard event. First place, Vance Shift. That deck also came in third place. It came in fifth place and it came in eighth place. Second place, Simic Nexus. Fourth place, Orza Vampires. Sixth place, Boros Feather. Seventh place, Jeskai Super Friends. All right, let's start digging into these deck lists. I'm going to go kind of quickly today because we have a lot to talk about. Here's that first place Bandscape Shift deck that Luis Scott Vargas played, and this is a sweet build. I love Field of the Dead. I love this type of deck. I've been playing a Gate Shift deck on Magic Arena. It's been phenomenal. This one is very different, though, than the Gate Shift version, as you can see here. Seems like right now, anyway, the Band version is the one that's kind of rising to the top. And as you can see, the whole idea here is to play a lot of different types of lands, play Field of the Dead, play Scape Shift, make a whole bunch of zombies, and win the game. There's other things you can be doing too. There's four Hydroid Crisis for another win condition, for example. I also like the use of Teferi Time Raveler here for copies of that. Not only can that defend you a little bit, but also under some circumstances, it could let you go off at the end of your opponent's turn, make all your zombies, and they might not be able to react to it then. This deck looked very good this weekend. Let's see what cards from Corset 2020 were here. In the main, we had Blossoming Sands, Field of the Dead, Temple of Mystery, Tranquil Cove, and Thornwood Falls. The sideboard had Val of Summer. There were other copies of this deck running Planar Cleansing in the main, and some copies were running Cerulean Drake and Shifting Ceratops in the sideboards. Second place is Simic Nexus, and yeah, nothing too surprising here. I don't want to spend a ton of time on this deck. You're pretty familiar with it. The core is still intact. There's four Growth Spiral, four Nexus of Fate, of course, four Root Snare. This one has three Search for Iskanta, four Wilderness Reclamation. Let's take a look at the cards from Core Set 2020 that are here, though. Drawn from Dreams and Temple of Mystery are in the main. Sideboard, Cerulean Drake, Ethergust, and Veil of Summer. Some sideboards are also running Shifting Ceratops. Okay, fourth place is the Orzhov Vampires deck. Another very solid deck. Now, this doesn't run a whole lot of cards from Corset 2020, but it is the cards from Corset 2020 that makes this deck as good as it is. Now, you see a lot of cards from previous sets that are some of the really strong vampires. Adanto Vanguard, for example. You have Champion of the Dusk, four of those in here too. Two Sanctum Seeker, you have three copies of Legion's Landing here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the cards from Corset 2020. Soren Imperious Bloodlord, huge card in this deck, and Knight of the Ebon Legion. Sideboard here includes Legion's End and Noxious Grasp. Some decks have been running these cards on the sideboard, Devout Decree and Disfigure. Sixth place is Boros Feather. This is another deck that was pretty well together prior to this season. Actually did pretty well last season. However, some key cards make it even better. Before we look at those, though, let's look at the core of this deck. Four copies of Feather the Redeemed, four Tenth District Legionnaire. You also have four Defiant Strike, four Reckless Rage, one Sheltering Light, four Shock. Let's go ahead and take a look at those cards from Core Set 2020, though. God's Willing, excellent addition to this deck, and also Temple of Triumph. Fry typically shows up in these sideboards. Seventh place is Jeskai Super Friends. You haven't seen as much of this deck compared to, say, like Esper Tempo or something like that. But this deck performed very well this weekend. When it comes to the Planeswalkers, Karn Sign of Urza is here, Narset shows up, Sahili Sublime Artificer, Sark in the Masterless, Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, just one though, Teferi Time Raveler, four of those, 
Let's go ahead and look at what the Core Set 2020 brought to this deck. Chandra Awaken Inferno, big addition there. And out of the sideboard, Ether Gust and Fry. Alright, let's go beyond the top eight. I wanted to show you one more Scape Shift deck. This is Golos Scape Shift. And this is very similar, as you can see. A lot of lands, a lot of different types of lands. But this one obviously is going a little deeper on colors because it wants to be able to activate Golos. Golos is a great way to just propel this deck if you're in the spot where you happen to have a lot of your things online but you don't have Scape Shift yet, not enough zombies to close out the game. This can help you get there. This deck is running a few different tricks compared to the one we saw previously, but the main idea is the same. Here's the Corset 2020 cards in the main. Cavalier of Thorns, Golos Tireless Pilgrim, of course, Dismal Backwater, Field of the Dead, Jungle Hollow, Temple of Malady, Temple of Mystery, Thornwood Falls. The sideboard has Cerulean Drake and Val of Summer. Alright, let's move on to the Star City Games Open. Like I said at the top of the show, this was a trios event. We're going to look at Standard first, and later we're going to come back and look at Modern and then Legacy. Remember though, because this is a team event, a weak Standard deck could be propped up a little bit by strong Modern and Legacy decks or vice versa, so just remember that as we go through today. This is a pretty big tournament though, and you're going to see a lot of different decks. The first place team was running Jun Dinosaurs for Standard, second place Boros Feather, third place Simic Nexus, fourth and fifth place Bantscape Shift, sixth place Esper Hero, seventh place Orzhov Vampires, and eighth place Jun Dinosaurs. So we looked at some of these decks already. We're going to look at the ones we haven't previously seen. First place, we have Jun Dinosaurs. And yeah, it's a dinosaur deck, very similar to the Vampire deck in the fact that there's a lot of older cards here that have been hanging around for a while, but there are cards from Corset 2020 that really make the deck great. So obviously a lot of good dinosaurs here, Registrar Alpha, Ripchaw Raptor, you even get Galta Primal Hunger, three of those. But what does Corset 2020 bring? Rotting Registrar, Marauding Raptor, and Shifting Ceratops in the main. Sideboard has Noxious Grasp, Flame Sweep, and Val of Summer. Sixth place Esper Hero or Esper Tempo, whichever you prefer to call it. Yeah, this deck is not really changing that much. It's been around, it was very powerful last season, continues to be powerful into this season and even got some new things to play around with. Before we get there, though, Planeswalkers, Narset, Parter of Vales, to Teferi, Hero of Dominaria, to Teferi, Time Raveler. This deck was using Disfigure and Noxious Grasp in the sideboard. Some decks, though, do main deck the Disfigure and also use Temple of Silence sometimes. Okay, we'll go beyond the top eight with Teamer Elementals, played by the 14th place team. There is one mistake in the deck list that Star City Games put out. You see four copies of Omnith Locus of Rage. That should actually be Omnith Locus of the Royal, so we'll look at that card in just a second to be clear. But the Teamer Elementals deck, which did really well last week, falling off a little bit this week. This is the only one that really finished anywhere towards the top of these lists. So this one, though, does look pretty good. I mean, doing a lot of the same things we saw last week. Ramping into Elementals, using Risen Reef to draw a whole bunch of cards. This one runs two Neoforms in the main as well. A lot of cards from Corset 2020 here in the main, as you could imagine. Chandra Acolyte of Flame, Scampering Scorcher, Thunderkin Awakener, Cavalier of Thorns, Leafkin Druid, Overgrowth Elemental, Creeping Trailblazer, there's the Omnith Locus of the Royal, Risen Reef, but wait, there's more. Couple lands too, Temple of Epiphany and Temple of Mystery. Out of the sideboard we find Healer of the Glade, Shifting Ceratops, Aether Gust, Fry, and Val of Summer. 18th place team ran Mono Red Aggro, and this is a deck that hasn't changed all of that much. But different variants of this deck are using different cards from Corset 2020, so you actually see some variety out there. This particular build did very well this week, and as you can see, there's a lot of cards from the old build. Fanatical Firebrand shows up here for copies, for Get Two Lava Runner, for Goblin Chain Whirler, for Runaway Steamkin, kind of the engine card here, for Viashino Pyromancer. You get two copies of Experimental Frenzy in the main. Let's go ahead and look at the cards from Corset 2020 here. Fry is in the sideboard, that's about it for this particular version. But there are other copies of this deck running these cards in the main. Chandra Acolyte of Flame and Ember Hauler. Sideboard, you also find Chandra Acolyte of Flame sometimes, Chandra Spitfire, and Heart Piercer Bow even. The 19th place team was running Bant Ramp. This is a mass manipulation variant of the deck, although I kind of lumped them all together for our purposes today. I didn't want to go over more than one copy of Bant Ramp, so this is the one we'll look at. Performed very well. Three copies of Mass Manipulation. A lot of ways to ramp into that. You get a copy of Prison Realm as well. For Nissa, Who Shakes the World. For Teferi, Time Raveler. The cards from Corset 2020. Voracious Hydra, the only card in this particular main. 
sideboard shifting Ceratops and Devout Decree. Other Bat Ramp decks, though, have been running these cards in the main, Leafkin, Druid, Risen Reef, and Drawn from Dreams. This type of package will add more elementals that still let you ramp, but also lets you play with Risen Reef, which can be a powerful card. Some decks are running these in the sideboard, Cerulean Drake, Aether Gust, and Vale of Summer. Okay, 23rd place. I just wanted to show you this because I thought it was cool. Rakdos Judith, so this is an Aristocrats deck. These decks really have never taken off, unfortunately. A lot of people have tried to make them work. This is not a bad finish, though, for the 23rd place team to be using it. Overall, you get three copies of Judith the Scourge Diva, three God Eternal Bantu, three Rick's Mighty Reveler, three Rekindling Phoenix. You don't see that as much anymore. Three Gutter Bones, four copies of Shock. Let's look at the cards from Corset 2020 here. Chandra Acolyte of Flame and Knight of the Ebon Legion are in the main. Sideboard Noxious Grasp. The team in 24th place was running Jeskai Control, another kind of unique deck I just wanted to show you real quick. Just to let you know, there's still a lot of variety out there. You can play a lot of different things. This particular build is running the Teferis, of course. Three big Teferis, four little Teferis, four copies of Narset Parter of Vales. You have a lot of control cards, Chemistry's Insight, Dovin's Veto, Search for Conta, a couple of those. Let's see what we get from Corset 2020. Few cards here. Chandra, Awakened Inferno, Drawn from Dreams, Temple of Epiphany, Temple of Triumph. In the sideboard, Aether Gust and Fry. Okay, we're going to leave the open for a moment and wrap up standard by looking at the Star City Games Classic. Now, this was just a standard event, but it was a little smaller. Here's your top eight. First place, Bant Midrange, that also came in seventh place. Bant Scapeshift came in second as well as third. Mono Red Aggro came in fourth and fifth. Esper Midrange came in 6th, although even though they called it Esper Midrange, it was basically the same thing as the Esper Tempo slash Hero deck, so we won't look at that one. And 8th place was Jun Dinosaurs. Again, I wanted to look at some deck lists we haven't seen yet, so let's take a look. We're going to go all the way down to ninth place in Esper Control. This is similar to Esper Tempo, but it was different enough that I wanted to show it to you. You can see the similarities right off the bat in our sad Big Teferi, Little Teferi, sure. But there's some different cards here. Three Basilica Bell Haunts in the main, one in the sideboard. You're also going to find some more ways to control the game, like Four Kaya's Wrath, for example. Corset 2020 brings us Drawn from Dreams and Temple of Silence. Noxious Grasp in the sideboard. Tenth place is Mono Blue Aggro, although I would consider this Mono Blue Tempo a lot of great creatures, but there is a control backup here. Three Wizards Retort, three Spell Pierce. Four Ops, one Negate, three Dive Down, four Curious Obsession, kind of an engine card here. When it comes to creatures, Tempest Jin is a big heavy hitter. Spectro Salar, great card. We're going to look at it in just a second. Terramander, Merfolk Trickster. Let's look at those Corset 2020 cards. Spectro Salar is just so good. One, one for one. Pay a blue and three draw card flash. If you play this, your opponent can't play a slow game. They have to do something or you're going to bury them in card advantage as time goes on. Unsummon is also here. Sideboard, Cerulean Drake, and Aether Gust. 13th place, Saltai Flash. I have been seeing a lot of Simic Flash decks recently, and this is a variation of those. The idea of these type of decks is you hang on to your cards, play them on your opponent's turn, and you just get all sorts of benefits because of things like Brineborn Cutthroat. We'll look at that one in just a second. You also have Frilled Mystic and a pretty big control suite here. This is very similar in some ways to what the Mono Blue Tempo deck does, but I do think in some cases it does it more efficiently. Four cards in the main from Corset 2020, Brineborn Cutthroat, like I mentioned, Spectral Sailors here again, Nightpack Ambusher, and Disfigure. Sideboard Cerulean Drake, Shifting Ceratops, two more copies of Disfigure, and Noxious Grasp. Okay, let's move on to the World of Modern, and we're going back to the Star City Games Open, so this again is the team event. So again, take that into account, but here's your top eight. First place, Azorius Control. Second place, Eldrazi Tron, also came in fifth place. Third place, Humans. Fourth place, Pure Steel Paladin, also known as Sram O's. Sixth place, Is It Phoenix? Seventh place, Four Color Urza. Eighth place, Mono Blue Prison. Okay, so we're going to look at some decks today that actually are using cards from Corset 2020 and or Modern Horizons. You're going to see more so Modern Horizons here. But the odd Corset 2020 card does also show up. So let's go ahead and look at some of these deck lists. Azorius Control is the first one. I'm not going to spend a ton of time on these modern or legacy decks because they don't change all that much. I'll leave it up for a few seconds so you can take it in, but obviously you know what to expect here. Jace the Mind Sculptor, Narset Parter of Vales, Teferi Hero of Dominaria, Teferi Time Raveler. This one is running four Snapcaster Mages as well. Modern Horizons added Force of Negation and Prismatic Vista. The third place team was running Humans. You know the Humans deck. I'm not going to go ahead and read the whole thing. 
you're probably quite familiar with it if you play modern, whether you're playing with it or against it. But yes, this one is using four ether vials. It's going to help you push out these creatures. You're going to have a lot of important humans here. You're going to back that up with things like unclaimed territory. Now let's go ahead and see what Modern Horizons brought us. In this copy, Waterlogged Grove in the main. Sideboard had Plague Engineer and Collector Oof. Some other copies of the deck that did well this week are using Unsettled Mariner in the sideboard. Fourth place is Pure Steel Paladin. This is a tough deck to influence when a new set comes out, even if that set is Modern Horizons. But one card did break through this week. That's El Adamri's Call. You found a copy in the main and two copies in the sideboard. Sixth place team was running is at Phoenix. Now, this deck continues to be very, very strong in the modern format. And as you can see, there's actually a lot of cards that came into it from Modern Horizons. That set took a great deck and made it that much better. So let's look at some of the core cards first. You got four Arclight Phoenix, four Thing in the Ice, four Lightning Bolts, two Metamorphose, two Ops, a lot of your cheap spells, as you would imagine. Let's take a look at the cards from Modern Horizons, though. Here they are. Lava Dart shows up in the main, Magmatic Sinkhole, Aria of Flame, and Fiery Islet. The sideboard brought us Season Pyromancer, Shenanigans, and Force of Negation. Some copies of the deck are running Magmatic Sinkhole and Aria of Flame in the sideboard, too, so just something to point out. Four Color Urza came in seventh place. Okay, so this is a fancy way of saying a new take on Thopter Foundry, Sword of the Meek. However, there's a lot going on here when you throw Urza into the mix. Let's take a look at the cards from Modern Horizons. Urza, Lord High Artificer, Goblin Engineer, and Arkham's Astrolabe. Some copies of the deck also run Prismatic Vista in the main. Now, this copy wasn't running any sideboard cards for Modern Horizons, but some others are, and those decks are running Plague Engineer and Dead of Winter. The 8th place team was running Mono Blue Prison, which is a War of Invention deck, also runs four copies of Narset Parter of Veils, and it even has a copy of Teferi's Puzzle Box, just one in the main, but it is there. What does this deck have from Modern Horizons? Just a sideboard card, but it is three copies of Urza Lord High Artificer. Okay, let's go beyond the top eight. The 10th place team was running Hogak. So Hogak is still viable even without Bertram Below in Modern. And this deck did put up a nice result. So as you can see, no life from the loam, no altar of dementia, still running for Hogak, for Vegvine, some of the other cards that have been really strong like Carrion Feeder and Gravecrawler. Of course, some of those cards were made possible by Modern Horizon. So let's take a look at the cards that that set brought. Carrion Feeder, of course, it's a reprint, but it became modern legal with this set. Hogak Arisen Necropolis, like I said, four of those. Sideboard, Plague Engineer, and Shenanigans. The 12th place team was running Amulet Titan, another deck that you're probably pretty familiar with that we see a lot of. Three copies of Karn the Great Creator here, four Azusa Lost But Seeking, four Primeval Titan, of course, four Amulet of Vigor. Let's see what we get from Modern Horizons. Two big sideboard cards here, Winds of Abandon and Force of Vigor. 14th place team was running Dredge. Now, they are running one copy of Hogak Arisen Necropolis, but this is really more of an old-school dredge deck. Four Narcomoebas, three prized amalgam, four stinkweed imp. You do have four life from the loam here, four creeping chill. In the main, just the one copy of Hogak Arisen Necropolis comes from Modern Horizons. But in the sideboard, you have shenanigans going on. Some other variants of this deck are running Fiery Islet, though, in the main. 15th place team running Mono Red Phoenix. I don't want to spend too much time on this since we saw Is It Phoenix. Of course, you got four Arc Light Phoenix. Now, this is doing some different things. Two Blister Coil Weird. You have four Soul Scar Mage, for example. Let's look at the cards from Modern Horizons. Lava Dart is here, as well as Fiery Islet in the main. Many variants of this are running Sunbaked Canyon. Not this one, but you'll see that quite a bit. And also, some variants are running Shenanigans and Magmatic Sinkhole out of the sideboard. 18th place team was playing a Burn deck. And you can see here, yep, it's a Burn deck. Not a whole lot different. I mean, you got all your cheap burn spells, Rift Bolt, Lava Spike, Lightning Bolt, so on and so forth. Goblin Guides are here. Nothing too unusual here. What does Modern Horizons bring? Just Sunbaked Canyon. Four of them, though, in the mana base. This is a sweet card for burn because when you don't need the mana, just trade it in for a card draw. Okay, we're going to leave the open yet again. Check out the Modern Classic again. This is a pure modern tournament this time, but a little smaller. Here is your top eight. First and second place, Model Red Phoenix. Third place, Grixis Urza. Fourth place, Counters Company. Fifth place, as well as eighth place, Burn. Sixth place, Eldrazi Tron. And seventh place, Junt. Again, let's look at some decks we haven't seen yet. Here's the fourth place, Counters Company deck. Now, there is an error here I found. If you look in the sideboard, you're going to see a copy of Plague Spitter. That actually should be Plague Engineer. So we'll look at that card in a second. Other than that, though, it looks pretty familiar. Four Collected Company, Four Court of Calling, 
You have Four Noble Hierarch, Kitchen Finks is here, Eternal Witness, Duskwatch Recruiter. Let's look at the cards though from Outer Horizons. Giver of Ruins, Ranger Captain of Eos, and Carrion Feeder all in the main. The sideboard has Plague Engineer, like I mentioned, and Hex Drinker. Jun came in seventh place. Jun decks are running the run in six. We're going to look at that card in just a second. That's one of the big changes here. But there's also a lot of familiar Jun cards here for Tarmogoy. If you got four Blood Braid Elf, two Dark Confidant, copy of Assassin's Trophy, four Inquisition of Kozilek, two Thoughtseize. Let's see what Modern Horizons brings us. Like I said, Ren and Six is here. Plague Engineer in the main this time. Baron Moor, another card that was reprinted in Modern Horizons but is now Modern Legal. Nurturing Peatland is here as well. Another copy of Plague Engineer in the sideboard. Let's go beyond the top eight to Orzhov Eldrazi. Now, most of the Eldrazi decks, like the colorless ones, they're not really running any new cards, but this deck is running something. And if you look at the deck list for just a second, you see a lot of Eldrazi. You also have things like Fatal Push, Inquisition of Kozilek, Thoughtseize. So it does have some different tricks. What does Modern Horizons add here? In the sideboard, you find Kaya's Guile. Goblins came in 14th place, and this is actually pretty sweet. So a lot of people have been hoping Goblins can get there. Well, this one put up a pretty nice result, and it really is hinging on cards that came to us because of Modern Horizons, some new cards as well as cards that were not legal prior to the printing there. Also, we got a reprinting of a key card in Corset 2020. So I'll let you look at the list for just a second. Yep, it's a whole bunch of goblins. Four Aether Vial, a Tar Fire is there. Let's go ahead and see what exactly we got from these two newer sets. Okay, Sling Gang Lieutenant is here. Goblin Matron reprinted in Modern Horizons, making it Modern Legal. Goblin Ringleader reprinted in Corset 2020, making it Modern Legal. Pasha Ligmans Meta and Munition Expert. The sideboard even had Icon of Ancestry. That's another card from Corset 2020. Devoted Devotion came in 15th place. Now, this is another Collected Company deck, so again, I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on it, but this one does run two copies of Finale of Devastation, making it feel a little bit different. Also, four Collected Companies here, as you would imagine, three copies of Court of Calling this time. A lot of the same creatures we saw in the fourth place deck. Sideboard, though, has Plague Engineer and Collector Oof from Modern Horizons. Okay, back to the Star City Games team open. This is the last portion, the Legacy portion. These were the legacy decks these teams were running. First place, four color Delver. Second place, as well as fifth, sixth, and seventh place, four color Control. Third place, Teamer Delver. Fourth place, Bomberman. Eighth place, is it Delver? Okay, let's look at some of these decks and see which ones have some influence from either Corset 2020 or Modern Horizons. First place team was running four color Delver, and you saw in the top eight, a lot of Delver decks did well. No surprise, it's legacy after all, right? Delver is a powerful card there, but there are cards from Modern Horizons that are creeping into these decks, and we'll look at those in just a second. Let's look at some of the older cards first. Of course, four Delver of Secrets, two Dreadhorde Arcanist, four Tarmogoyf in this one, one Leovold Emissary of Trest here in the main, another one in the sideboard too. And as you could expect, a lot of control backup, Force of Will, Daze, Lightning Bolt, and such. What does Modern Horizons bring us? Ren and Six, three copies in the main. Sideboard has Plague Engineer. Okay, second place team running four color control. And you saw there were a lot of these in the top eight of this particular tournament. For whatever reason, that was the deck a lot of these teams went with. So in this build, there's two Leovold Emissary of Trust in the main, two Snapcaster Mage, three Dak Faden, two Jace the Mind Sculptor, another Planeswalker, which we'll look at in just a second. Again, a lot of control backup. Force of Will, Fatal Push, Brainstorm is here as well. Liliana's Triumph is showing up in a lot of these decks nowadays. Four Ponder, two Thoughtseize. And yes, three copies of Ren and Six in the main here. The sideboard has Plague Engineer and Force of Negation. These are some other cards, though, you can find in main decks of these builds. Plague Engineer, Arkham's Astrolabe, and Prismatic Vista. Third place team was running Teamer Delver. And yeah, it's not too different from the Delver deck we just looked at, so I don't want to spend a ton of time on it. Four Delver of Secrets, four Noble Hierarchs in this one, a couple Tarmogoyfs. But yet again, we get something that is constant. Three copies of Ren and Six in the main. Sideboard has Shenanigans, Force of Will, and Magmatic Sinkhole. The fourth place team was running a very popular legacy deck, Bomberman. You're going to see a lot of this right now. Four Karn the Great Creator, four Monastery Mentor, three Walking Ballista. Mishra's Bobble, four of those are in here, four Lotus Petal, three Lion's Eye Diamond, four Chalice of the Void. What do we see from the newer sets here? We get a Corset 2020 card, three copies of Mystic Forge in the main. 
Sideboard has Nature's Chant for Modern Horizons. Okay, one more Delver deck. Is a Delver comes in eighth place, four Delver of Secrets, four Dreadheart Arcanus, three True Name Nemesis, one Young Pyromancer, at least that's different. What do we get for Modern Horizons? You get Prismatic Vista in the main. Sideboard Force of Negation. Some variants of this deck, though, are running Aria of Flame in the main as well as Fiery Islets. And some are running Magmatic Sinkhole in the sideboard. We'll go beyond the top eight. The ninth place team was running Reanimator. Not a lot of changes here. Chancellor of the Annex, Sire of Insanity, for Grizzle Brand, Lotus Petals, Animate Dead, Dark Ritual, and Tomb Exhum. You've probably seen this list before. But what do we get from Modern Horizons? Shenanigans out of the sideboard. Tenth place team was running Storm. Not a lot of variants here either. You're probably pretty familiar with this particular build. This is the one that runs Past in Flames. Two copies. One copy of Tendrils of Agony. Four Thought Seas. Four Brainstorm. And Ad Nauseam in here. Lion's Eye Diamond. Four copies. Four Lotus Petal. Let's see what we get, though, from this time Corset 2020. It's a sideboard card, but it's an important one. Veil of Summer. The 16th place team was running Lands. And it's a pretty classic Lands build, as you can see here. Four Life from the Loam. Two Gamble. Four Exploration. Sylvan Library, one copy for crop rotation. Whole lot of utility lands, as you can see there, but you probably already see the card from Modern Horizons that's making the huge impact. Ren and Six, three copies in the main. Sideboard has Force of Vigor. Some sideboards of this deck are also running Chandra Awakened Inferno from Corset 2020. Miracles came in 18th place here, and you get two copies of Monastery Mentor, three Snapcaster Mage, Two Jace the Mind Sculptor, two Narset Harder of Vals, two Teferi Time Raveler, Brainstorm, Counterspell, Force of Will, Swords to Plowshares. Pretty classic deck, right? Can Modern Horizons add anything to this? Yeah, they give us Prismatic Vista. The team that came in 20th place was running Grixis Control, Baleful Strix, four copies, three Snapcaster Mage, two Jace the Mind Sculptors, one Liliana the Last Hope, two Narset Harder of Vals. A lot of control elements, Fatal Push, Force of Will, him to Turok in this one. Modern Horizons contributes to the sideboard with Plague Engineer and Force of Negation. The team that came in 23rd place was running Azoria Stoneblade. This is another classic legacy deck. Two Snapcaster Mage, four Stoneforge Mystic, three True Name Nemesis, two Vendillion Click. Jace the Mind Sculptor shows up here too, Narset to Fairy Time Raveler as well. Modern Horizons gives us Prismatic Vista in the main and Force of Negation in the side. All right, the last tournament. This is the Legacy Classic. Just a Legacy tournament, a little smaller, though. First place, Team Redelver. Second place, as well as third place, is a Delver. Fourth place, Mono Red Prison. Fifth place, Bomberman. Sixth place, Azoria Stoneblade. Seventh place, Four Color Loam. Eighth place, Mono Blue Urza. Again, we'll look at some deck lists that are running some of the new cards that we haven't seen yet. Fourth place, Mono Red Prison. Chandra Torture Defiance here for copies. One Karn, Cyan of Urza. Four Karn, the Great Creator. Big card for these prison decks generally nowadays. Crow Mox and Snaring Bridges here. Chalice of the Void, four of those. Three Trinisphere, four Blood Moon. Now, there is a card in the sideboard that is new, but it's not from Modern Horizons. It is Chandra Awakened Inferno from Corset 2020. Seventh place, four Color Loam. Just runs one copy of Life from the Loam, as you see here. Three Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Four Dark Confidant, four Knight of the Reliquary. However, I bet you already see it. Three copies of Ren and Six in the main. Sideboard has Plague Engineer from Modern Horizons. Mono Blue Urza came in eighth place. This deck runs four Karn Sign of Urza, four Karn the Great Creator. But even so, Urza gets the top billing here in the name. Four copies of Urza Lord High Artificer, which we'll look at in just a second. You get a copy of Psy Master Thopterist in the main as well. Four Trinket Mage, three Walking Ballista. And like I mentioned, the only card from Modern Horizons is Urza Lord High Artificer. Imperial Painter came in 11th place to help celebrate the unbanning of Painter's Servant in Commander, right? So this is another classic Legacy deck, but it's changed a lot over the years. Four copies of Karn the Great Creator have pushed it recently. Of course, the key cards here are three Painter Servant, three Grindstones in the main, one additional copy of each in the sideboard. Modern Horizons brings Goblin Engineer and Arkham's Astrolabe. Maverick came in 13th place. Another classic Legacy deck, been around for a long time, but there are some changes to it again. Sword of Fire and Ice, one Sylvan Library, four Swords to Plowshares, a lot of creatures in these builds. One Knight of Autumn, four Knight of the Reliquary, four Mother of Ruins, four Noble Hierarch, the list goes on and on. What do we get from Corset 2020 this time? Veil of Summer in the sideboard. 
12 posts came in 16th place. And this is another deck that got pushed by Karn the Great Creator. I mean, look at these numbers here. Three Karn Zyanaverza, four Karn the Great Creator, three Ugin the Ineffable, three Ugin the Spirit Dragon, three Walking Ballista. This is a sweet big mana build, and it's running three copies of a card from Core Set 2020 in the main. That card is Manifold Key. All right, that concludes our look at the tournament scene this weekend. A lot of decks we talked about. So I wanted to do a big kind of wrap up because there were so many big tournaments this weekend. Really get an idea of how Modern Horizons has impacted things and even how Corset 2020 has made an impact on Modern and Legacy. Future videos, I won't go into quite as much detail, but I really wanted to make the most of this opportunity. Until next time though, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.